All right, let's get started. Wait a second here for the TV to warm up. So today's Wednesday, and your project is due on Friday. So you've now got just 48 hours remaining to complete the project. Um, I guess there's not more I can say about that. I've been talking about it all semester long. If you have any uh, specific questions, please feel free to reach out. The uh, next homework assignment you've got is the last of the semester, and that's due two weeks from today, on Wednesday, the 1st of December. And so what we talked about in class last time, today's discussion about the learning curve, all of that kind of ties into homework number 14. All right. Um, this is a picture of a sweatshop. And a, a sweatshop is a term for a place where, I guess, Maybe it's called a sweatshop because it doesn't look like they've got air conditioning in there. Um, the people are crowded together. It can be often dangerous conditions. You know, when there are fires in some of these uh, developing world factories, lots of people die because sometimes they're in crowded buildings that don't have a lot of uh, safety measures that are taken. But the thing about them is that they're very productive, and that's why there's so many facilities like this is that the people get very fast at sewing and if you've ever seen a video of people making things like you know Levi pants or um, you know Calvin Klein shirts or whatever um, it's just miraculous amazing how quickly they could sew I mean it's like they would sew a pair of pants in just a matter of seconds and so they've gotten very fast at it and of course probably the first time they sat down to sew some clothing they weren't that quick but they've gotten quick over the years um, and that uh, that idea of improving your productivity over time is what we're going to be discussing today and um, so I'll introduce some terminology that we're using in an equation today and the variable K is assigned in this equation to describe how long it took to do something the very first time because the idea is, is that with each subsequent time you do something, you become a little bit better and you complete the task faster. And so time is sometimes the most important input that's being measured, but it could be other resources as well that are being utilized as you create or complete a task. But the variable K just means how long it took to do the thing the very first time around. And that's kind of the starting point for further improvements. Um, automation is uh, pretty great. You know, there's robots that do a lot of the work, and even when it's machines and not people, the improvements occur because it may be that a certain machine is breaking down, and so then you reposition it so it becomes more efficient, or the program that drives the automation is becoming optimized over time. And so even when technology is involved, um, there are still improvements that can be made. Let's take a look at this interesting video that shows how the uh, warehouses at Amazon operate. Let me just... Gives you the idea that um, improvements can be tied to a human getting better at something, or it can also be tied to us finding new ways to apply technology to the same problem. All right, so we've just defined terms, and remember that the variable k in the earlier slide talked about how long it took to do the first thing. Um, when we do this learning curve and calculate how quickly people improve at completing tasks, we have to take other measurements besides just the first time it was done. Uh, there's going to be a curve that says how quickly somebody is improving and so if I was just going to graph, like here is the time it takes on the vertical axis and then uh, on the horizontal axis is the number of times the task has been, com has been attempted. Okay. The curve is going to look a little bit like this, where the first time you do something, there's this intercept, 
and then you make relatively rapid gains at first, but then the curve begins to flatten out because maybe you found many of the low-hanging fruit improvements. You know, like if you, at the, uh, at the first couple of times, you noticed that you could position your hand a little bit differently and then that would speed up the process. You find the, uh, the biggest impacts early on, but then the more and more times that you've done something, the improvements get relatively incremental. So to see what this curve is going to look like, you can't just have the first data point. You need to have a couple of more data points as well to fit the curve to that. And so we're going to use the variable s to define um, how long it takes to uh, have twice as much experience as you had before. And so if you go from, if you're installing oil pans and you previously have installed five and then after some period you've installed 10 oil pans, what you do is you'd look at the ratio of the inputs required to gain, uh, like to double your experience. So 37 seconds is how long it took for the quicker of the two once you had 10 oil pans of experience being installed and then 40 was what you had when you were doing your fifth oil pan and so this S is basically related to the ratio of time for a doubling of experience. And so it could be from the fifth to the tenth. If you measured how long it take to do something the second time, and then you measured it the fourth time, that would also be a doubling of experience. And so what we're assuming here is that there is a, a consistent trend of improvement. Each time you've doubled your experience, you're going to find that same ratio of an improvement. And of course, it's not strictly true that you'll always have that trend continue forever, but it's just a simplistic model for representing reality. All right, so here's that same curve that I've just sketched out on the whiteboard. And a learning curve is a method of explaining improvements to efficiency and to project that and include it in your cost estimates. Remember that the chapter that we're in right now, chapter 15, is all about trying to predict how much things are going to cost before you're actually doing them. And so in class on Monday, we talked about the unit method where you find, for example, the price per ton of steel. And you look at what is the cost of shaping it into a pipe section and so on. And so then you could estimate the cost of something looking at the unit cost. But the more something is done on a construction site, in a factory, or even when applying services, people are going to get better and better at it. And so you have to have an approach for taking those improvements in productivity into account when you estimate costs. And so this same learning improvement function is sometimes called an experience curve or a manufacturing progress function, depending on what discipline it's applied in. Um, but we've talked about the variable k, which is how long it takes to do the first time. And we've talked about the doubling of experience, that learning curve slope, s, is some decimal that represents the ratio of input, usually time, required when you have doubled your experience. And so once you take s, then you transform it into the learning curve exponent with a logarithm function. So the log of s divided by 2 is what gives you n. And then here, this equation tells you how much time it would take to produce unit number u. So like if you wanted to predict how long it's going to take, I don't know if you can see the curve, it's a bit small, but if you're going to try to estimate how much time it takes to produce the 35th unit, then in that case, u would be 35, k would be how much time it took to do the first time. And here it looks like the very first time was 42 minutes. So k would be 42 minutes, u would be the 35th unit that you're trying to figure out how long it took, and then n would be determined by the slope of the curve and the previous improvements that you'd seen when you doubled your experience. So I know this seems a little bit abstract, but we're going to make it seem uh, more concrete and relatable and understandable with the uh, example that we take a look at. Um, before we get to your in-class exercise, 
let's take a look at this illustration. Let me just do the calculations for you. So let's say that the first time you sew a pair of pants, it takes 85 minutes. So we know that that means K equals 85 minutes. So I'll write that here on the board. K equals 85 minutes. And then it says the second pair of pants you sew is 76.5 minutes. And the fourth is 68.85. And we can use that to define S. And so S is... 68.85 divided by 76.5. Okay, so if you put that ratio into your calculator, I think what you're going to find is it's 0 0.9. 0 0.90. So what that means is every time you double your experience, we're going to assume that it only takes you 90% as long as the previous time. So, you know, when you go from the second to the fourth pair of pants, the fourth pair of pants takes 90% as long to create as the second pair of pants did. And if, by the way, we could say, so this was from the second to the fourth. If we wanted to check that, let's look at what is the S parameter going from the first pair of pants to the second pair of pants. Okay, so the first pair of pants is the one that's the longer time. We put that in the denominator because it's the longer time. It was 85 minutes in the denominator. And the second pair of pants was 76.5. And that also is 0 0.90. So this data so far is exhibiting a, a consistency that any time we double our experience, it only takes 90% as long to create the thing. All right, so this is asking, how long will it take you to sew your 10th pair of pants? All right, so we have S and we have K. Let's define N. Okay, so N is going to be the log of S, which is 0 0.90 divided by the log of 2. Okay, so if you've got your calculator, please get that out. And let's calculate the logs. 0.9. Okay, so the log of 0.9 is negative 0 0.04576. And the log of 2 is 0 0.30103. All right, so n is negative 0 0.15200. So that is going to be the factor that we put here into the equation. So we want to know how long to take to sew the 10th pair of pants, so z for the 10th, 10th pair of pants is going to be 85 minutes, okay, and then the, the u is the 10th pair of pants, and so we want to put the number 10 in there, and we take it to the power of n, which is negative 0.152. Okay, so we can do that calculation now. 10 to the power of 0.152. It gives us this part is 0.704. Six nine, and then of course that's multiplied by eighty five minutes. So, what this is saying is that it's only taking us seventy point four percent as long to do the tenth pair of pants as it did to do the first, and so the tenth pair of pants will take uh, fifty nine point nine minutes.
Okay, so any questions on part A so far? All right. Now, part B is slightly different. It's not saying just the tenth pair of pants, but it's saying how much time is required to sew all ten pair of pants, the total. Because the first pair of pants took 85. The second pair of pants took 76.5. We don't know yet how much the third pair of pants took, but we can use this trend line function to estimate that. So let me illustrate how we could set that up in Excel. Okay, so I'll paste the formula in here so that we see it. Here's the formula that we're going to be applying. And uh, K, remember the first pair of pants that got sewed, K is 85. And maybe here I could define the units of K, it's minutes. Let me zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. Um, the S value was the ratio of 68.85 divided by 76.5. 0 0.9, exactly. It's not always going to be some perfectly round number like that in case, I mean, rarely will it actually. Okay, and then n, let me calculate the n variable. It is the log of this divided by the log of 2. Okay, 0. Point, negative 0 0.152. All right, so now here's our pair number. And then here's the, uh, the time it took in minutes. So I'm going to apply this function for the first pair, the second pair, the third pair, all the way down through the tenth pair of pants. Okay, and so then the time will be k times u to the power of n. <coughs> okay, so 85 minutes, so far it checks out. We know that the second pair should take 76.5, so if I drop this down and it says 76.5, we're on track. I know the fourth pair, it should predict 68.85. We're still on track, it looks like. We've calculated the tenth pair should take 59.9. So let me take it down all the way through the tenth. So we know how much time it took for each one of these pair of pants. And so then the total will just be the sum of the individuals. So the total time is... all of this. 679.5 minutes. Okay, so does that make sense to everybody? Any questions whatsoever? Which you to raise the power to is there a button on the keyboard? Yeah, it's the uh, Shift 6 button. Okay. Shift 6. So let me show you that again. Um, so it was K times this pair number, which is uh, the variable we're using, u. And then to the power of is shift 6 to the power of n. And I need to anchor that reference as well. And we can drag it down. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Great. <coughs> Here's those same calculations that we saw on the board. All right. In the in-class exercise question that you've got, um, we're applying the idea of a learning curve to a Rubik's Cube. So we have some data here. And we want to find out how long it's going to take you to solve the Rubik's Cube after you've had 100 tries at it. 
The only difficulty is that we forgot to measure the time the first, for the first one. So we don't know k. But you can back calculate k because you do know, for example, from the second to the fourth, you could get the ratio of s with that. And then if you know the ratio of s, then you can use from the second to the first to find out how long it would have taken in the first time. So we can check this s ratio with the second to the fourth or the fourth to the eighth or from the third to the sixth. It doesn't matter which one you use to determine s, but once you know the s trend, then you can go backwards from the second time it was solved and determine k, and then after you determine k, you should use Excel in the same way that I've just illustrated to find out how long is it going to take to solve the Rubik's Cube the hundredth time. All right, so go ahead and get started with that. I'll be circulating around with the solution when you think you've got it. Let me know and um, let me just, okay, so just to clarify, by the way, <laughs> does yours say this should be solved by hand? Yeah, okay. So I'm not asking you to find all 100 like I just did with the, uh, the previous example. I just want to know the 100th, so that that last time that you try. So you don't necessarily have to use Excel. You're not going to be calculating all of the tries together. Is Excel acceptable? Sure. Okay. Although, I mean, uh, if, if you do the calculations by hand, maybe like you can see it in a way and refer back to it later in a way that's more meaningful than if it's just equations in a spreadsheet. So let's look at the solution. How long is it going to take to do the hundredth unit? So the first thing we have to do is figure out the amount of time it took the first time around because that is the k variable that's going to go into our formula. So the, uh, the first time around is going to follow the same pattern in time that the improvement from the second to the fourth, from the fourth to the eighth. So rather than going forward, we'll just go back with that same pattern. So you can see that the S ratio is 0.91, which means it takes 91% as long to do once you've doubled your experience. And so to determine the first time around, then we would just simply have the 24 minutes, which was the second time, and divide that by the S ratio. And that'll tell us how long it took, 26.38 minutes the first time when we forgot to measure that data point. And so then with the n exponent value and the first time, you can see that it will uh, take 14.09 minutes. And that's just an estimate. Who, who knows how long it'll actually take? You know, you could run out of ways to improve before then, or maybe suddenly at the 80th time you have an epiphany and find some approach that dramatically improves efficiency. So this is just a model. This is just a way to estimate the uh, human effect and improvement in time. 